Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. The city of Detroit's got a problem with illegal dumping. People will bring a truckload of, oh, I don't know, old tires or construction debris, find a vacant lot in Detroit, and just dump it there, and then drive away. And someone else has got to come by and clean up that mess. And so it's been a problem for a while. They're trying to crack down on it. But the real issue, of course, is that people do this at night, now weekends, and it so rarely ever gets these people caught. So here is an interesting story that Luann sent me. Kimberly Craig wrote this for WXYZ TV, Channel 7 in Detroit. And it combines a couple other things that we've talked about before. Detroit Police Department cameras help bust a truck repair shop for using a customer's vehicle for illegal dumping. So (laughs) you always fear if you drop your vehicle off someplace and leave it there for a while that someone might do something to it or use it without your permission. And I've handled cases like that as well. But this one combines all of the above. So the owners of the repair shops, they have no idea who used one of their customers' vehicles to illegally dump seven barrels of what Detroit police said appears to be used motor oil in a neighborhood just five minutes away from that repair shop in southwest Detroit. So someone used a customer's truck to dump barrels of used motor oil in a vacant lot. They don't know who could have possibly done such a thing. Because, I mean, this is a repair shop we're talking about that works on trucks. What would they know about used motor oil? The owner of the shop told 7 News that he was out of the country when the illegal dumping took place, and he directed us to talk to his partner. That's us being the TV station. Uh, The partner said, it's very simple. I think an employee illegally used the truck at night without authorization of the business. The end result is the business having to pay a fine for it. Well, yes, if your employees do crazy stuff, you might be held liable for it. Detroit Police Department official Garrett McAuliffe, who was assigned to the General Assignment Unit... (laughs) Who assigned him to the general assignment unit? Is there a specific assignment unit? He said the illegal dumping took place in the middle of the afternoon and was also caught on one of the many surveillance cameras that Detroit police have set up in all parts of the city to crack down on illegal dumpers. And I've talked about this before, and it's a widespread problem such that in Detroit, they're actually trying to crack down specifically on dumping. They found some lots that people keep using over and over again. So they set up surveillance of the lot and occasionally catch people. People are doing it any time of the day or night, he said. He and members of the special unit were able to track down the owner of the truck who informed them that his company vehicle was in a shop for repairs. So they came by his place and said, "Uh, your vehicle was identified as being used to dump some stuff. Can you tell us why that might be? And he said, no, because my truck's in the shop being repaired. So it obviously wasn't me. Detroit police conducted surveillance to see where the truck was and who was in possession of it. Investigators then issued the owner of that shop a $5,000 ticket for improper transport of hazardous waste and a $10,000 ticket for dumping hazardous waste on a public or private property. Uh, A man who lives nearby where the stuff was dumped says they figured they can get away with it. It's just a shame. They want their street clean. They don't want nobody dumping on their street, but they'll come on my street. And Detroit used to have a population approaching 2 million. Now, that was a while ago. It peaked, and it's been coming down ever since. So there are neighborhoods in Detroit where a bunch of homes are occupied, a bunch of homes are vacant, and then there's a few lots where a house is caved in or a house has been demolished, or maybe it was vacant the entire time. But because nobody's taking care of it, it's overgrown with weeds, for instance. So that is typical of some neighborhoods in Detroit. There are people who take pride in their homes, take pride in their neighborhoods. They keep their yard nice and clean. They might even mow the vacant lots to keep them clean. And people will still come by and just dump stuff there. And it's an ongoing, very, very serious problem. So Detroit Police Department Lieutenant Dana Russell said the residents don't appreciate it, we don't appreciate it, and we're out here working to stop it. So you wonder if the $15,000 in fines might make somebody think twice about doing that a second time. It's not something you can just do and think and it's going to be okay. This is a serious matter, the officer continued. Now, Channel 7 asked the manager of the repair shop if they were going to terminate the worker involved in the dumping. Uh, That man then said it would be too difficult to figure out who did it. 
because apparently there's so many people working there and they don't keep track of who drives which vehicles off the lot. And I know some of you say, Steve, what if the guy took the vehicle for a test drive uh, after he worked on it and he ran over, picked up some stuff and ran out and dumped it in a, in a field there and he got paid by somebody else to do that? That's hypothetically possible. But I would also wonder if you traced that oil back, if, you know, could actually just understand everything, be all knowing, if that oil didn't come from that shop. Whatever it is, it is. It's passed. We paid the ticket. It is what it is. What can you do? He added. So they paid the ticket. It's actually two tickets. And believe it or not, Detroit actually has an app. They created an app called Improve Detroit Mobile App. And you can report illegal dumping using the app. That's how serious of a problem it is in the city of Detroit. And I've mentioned before, I've, I've lived in the southeastern Michigan the bulk of my life. And if people from other parts of the country say, where are you from? I often say Detroit. And that's a common thing. You know, it's a suburb of Detroit. But I say, I'm from Detroit. And if they go, oh, I know Detroit well. Where are you from? I'd say, oh, I grew up in Birmingham. Birmingham is actually a county away from Detroit. But the weird part is, is that this kind of dumping happens everywhere. And it's so annoying. And so right now, where I live, I have several different routes I take in the morning. I go mountain biking. I ride my mountain bike out and around. And a lot of it's on dirt roads. Or I go running. And so there's a couple different, I, I try to stay away from trafficked areas. So I try to go down dirt roads and back roads and all that kind of stuff. Avoid traffic. It's quieter. It's less to watch out for when you're out running or biking. And there's a long stretch of a dirt road where the road is kind of a rough road. You wouldn't want to drive a nice car down it. It's that rough. And about once a year, sometimes twice a year, somebody comes by and just dumps a big old pile of tires in the ditch right there on that road. So I go by there one morning. It's just a ditch. It's a nice, pleasant little ditch waiting for the next rain so it can be helpful. Next day, I come by and there's a big old pile of tires there. Big old pile of tires. Now, the property next to the ditch is a farm field that is gigantic. And I don't know if the person who owns it or farms it. Number one, I don't know if it's the same people. Could be somebody who owns it, someone else farms it. But I don't know if the people who own that field are the ones who live on one edge of it in a house. Or if somebody could live far away and just come in. But the point is that whoever dumps the stuff in the middle of the night, in the ditch, next to that field knows that those tires are going to get picked up by the county. And the county has trucks that go around and clean up the ditches. And so some stuff winds up in ditches naturally. If there's a car accident and a bumper falls off a car, you'd think the tow truck driver would grab the bumper. I used to do that when I drove a tow truck. But once in a while, this junk just winds up on the side of the road. And, and, and all the riding and running that I do, I see an amazing amount of junk on the sides of the road. And that's understandable. But a pile of tires was put there on purpose. They didn't fall off a truck and just happened to land in a perfect pile. Somebody had a bunch of tires to dispose of, probably from a shop that charged a disposal fee. Think about that. When you go to a place that works in your vehicle, they often charge you a disposal fee. Supposedly, they're disposing of this stuff properly and it costs them. And they pass that cost along to you. You assume they're going to dispose of the stuff properly. But it very well could be that someone from the shop that you're at is just going to take them all, throw them in the back of a customer's truck, drive over someplace on the edge of town and throw them all in a ditch or on a vacant lot in Detroit. And this is the kind of thing where if they catch the people who do it, I know you're going to say, Steve, $15,000 is a lot of money. Well, it is. But think about this. So, Somebody calls the city and says, uh, actually, they report through the app, Improved Detroit Mobile App. They report a couple big 55-gallon drums just kind of appeared on this lot. The city sends out their maintenance people or DPW, whatever it is, and they go out there and somebody realizes that the can is full of something. It's full of something. What's it full of? Because now we got to figure this out. Because it's, if it's full of like motor oil, it's one thing. If it's full of like contaminated gas, that, that it's related, but it might be something else. What if it's uh, uh, engine coolant and just other fluids that come out of cars? <laughs> 
What if it's industrial waste that didn't come from a truck repair shop? What if it's all hydraulic fluid? Well, you know, it's, somebody's got to figure this out. And then they got to figure out how do we dispose of it properly? I suspect it's expensive to dispose of properly. Otherwise, these people would be doing it right. They wouldn't be doing it this way. And I know some of you are going to say, Steve, if it's motor oil, they can recycle it. And that might not be that big of a deal. And that is the point. Something else might be going on here, and this might not just be used motor oil. Who knows what it is? And that's the problem. Someone's got to identify it, then they've got to transport it, and they've got to dispose of it. And that's a pain. So this has been one of my pet peeves, uh, and and I could ramble and, and go off on a tangent about this. How many places I've seen inappropriate stuff dumped? You know, engine blocks, transmissions from cars, you know, just rusty rims, just weird stuff. Somebody had a pile of stuff. They didn't want it on their property anymore, so they threw it in someone else's ditch. Well, that takes care of the problem. No, it doesn't. And so the fact that a customer's vehicle is being used for this, this does not take rocket science to figure out what's going on here. Because everyone knows that Detroit has an app called the Improved Detroit Mobile App. Everyone knows the police have set up cameras on some of these sites And so they go, well, we can't do it in a company truck because we might get caught on camera or someone with that app might get us. So let's use someone else's truck to do it. And there's the problem. So it's a crazy story from Detroit, but the owners of the shop where the truck was being repaired uh, have been fined $15,000. So there you go. But Detroit Police Department cameras helped bust a truck repair shop for using a customer's vehicle for illegal dumping. But of course, they say they don't know who did it. It's a mystery. So Luann sent that to me from WXYZ TV Detroit. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. If love is the answer, could you please rephrase the question?